Everyone, welcome back to the shop. So glad to have you here. I think it's about time for me to share with you the new addition to the shop and this, this wash on 25 by 118 engine lathe. And the first story I probably want to tell you is how I acquired this big beast. I was in the market for a larger machine compared to the Acer 1440 I have over there to do some more future projects for the shop. And on the search begins for the big lathe. Search for a Monarch, all the other World War II machines that are just still around today that work wonderful. Well, in this area, there just isn't any that are actually worth purchasing. <laughs> if you guys know by that, they're wore out. So uh, I'm a big auction fanatic and a flyer came in through the mail about an auction that was about six hours away and it was a machine shop going out of business. They manufactured or and repaired stuff for the uh, forest industry and that business was in business for 30 years. So I drove over there, hooked the trailer on, hoping to purchase a big lathe. And at this auction were several lathes of this size and two or three that are actually bigger. We're talking chucks that are about 40 inches in diameter. So this guy was about the, the smallest of them. Uh, at the auction, I was able to talk to the machinists that actually ran these machines uh, and ask them about them. And, this was their favorite machine out of all the lathes in the whole place. So, of course, I was going to go for this one. And uh, so the year is a 1999 wash on 25 inch swing, 16 over the, the carriage here, and 20, 118 inches long is what the bed measures. It weighs in at about 9,000 pounds. And it's, uh, this is actually kind of a copy if you want to call it a copy of the Moriseki Japanese machines, so which are no longer in production. One of the reasons also too I wanted a more modern machine is that the through hole in the back through the spindle is larger. This has a three and an eighth inch through hole, which some of the older monarchs and other lathes of that era have a little tiny through hole. So having a, that uh, capacity to stick something through the headstock was really important to me. The other thing too is this uh, company is still in business manufacturing these lathes so getting parts for them are readily available. Uh, so but as you can tell this is a used machine and it was used right up to the day that uh, I got it. So and it was fun to be able to talk to the machinist about how it works. He went over with me and and uh, all of its little quirks and all its positives too. So but I want to share that with you as we speak right now. So let's just start back here at the tailstock. It's, as you can see, it's pretty good size. It's got an MT5 uh, Morris Taper uh, tail stock. It has uh, two, these two big long big bolts that takes a wrench to move the, the tail stock back and forth. And this thing is like butter smooth. It's in really good shape. It just, you can tell it was well cared for. Uh, it has power carriage. So because of this machine is so long, I can move it back and forth. You can. We can knock this out of gear and we got, we can move this back and forth, which most of these large lathes have. Okay, and basically we have about 16 inches of cross slide travel back and forth. So that's a lot of cross slide. Uh, and then the compound I believe has six and a half inches of travel on the compound, which I absolutely love. This is going to be great for turning tapers without having to put a taper attachment on, which I don't have at the moment, but I'm currently looking for one or we just might make one here on the shop. So everything as you can tell is just big. Um, this knob right here, this lever uh, activates as you can tell it turns into free spool so that I can move the carriage back and forth. This knob locks it into place and now I can operate it manually and kick it out of gear, whatever you need to do. Uh, one of my favorite things about this is just how smooth the, the auto, uh, this turns the auto feed or the carriage uh, movement and it is amazingly how accurate you can just pop this in and out and it's, it feels like there's no pressure on this when you're cutting and we'll make some test cuts later and I'll show you how smooth that is. Absolutely love that. So this moves the carriage back and forth. This is our uh, threading, so it locks the half nuts into place. This switches. 
<laughs> what the heck did I do? Oh, because the bat's locked. There we go. This switches the carriage back or forwards. There's no controls, so when the machine's running, I can move the carriage left. I can move the carriage right just by switching this on the go. So that's pretty nice. Auto luber, so you just pull that out and it just squirts away oil. There's my uh, dial right there, or my sight glass for how much oil I got left into the carriage. The shaft here, it tells me where I'm positioned for threading. And then, of course, our on and off switch. And then um, let's uh, change some speeds and feeds over here, which is pretty sweet. One of the cool things I like about this leg is how quickly you can go from a, a higher speed uh, to a low speed is just two knobs and you just match the tags over here for whatever so if you want 220 you put this in low and then it's vertical straight up and all the way over and now we're at 220 pretty smooth to change the feed of how much the carriage moves back and forth you have actually uh, you have three levers you have to match so you Let's just say you wanted to turn 12 thousandths of an inch in carriage uh, feed. You need to be on A, which A is up here. So click that over. You need to be on C, which C is over here. You click that over, and you need to be on F, which we are on F right now. So all of those need to be in the correct position. But then you have a line of this is, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight feeds which is here to select so a range of 21 thousandths to 12 thousandths all with a motion of this dial right here so it's a pretty good range and most of the time i'm just working this back and forth to change the the, the feed of the carriage uh, back and forth so i do like this it's pretty fast okay uh, talk about the chuck this isn't the original chuck i have a, a three jaw for it it's smaller, I have a smaller four jaw, the original 15 inch, I believe, and then it came with this 20 inch uh, four jaw chuck, which is uh, fantastic. I absolutely love this large chuck. It's one of the reasons why I went after this machine. The capacity is just so much bigger. I love it. Okay, um, what other good stuff? It's got, the other thing that the machinist liked that they uh, recommended to me was they loved the foot brake on this bad boy. So the other machines there at the machine shop didn't have this. So uh, this was a big appeal for me is the foot brake to stop the spindle. And we'll come down here to the end. <clears throat> it had, this has, Two steady rests with it. One, I believe this is a an eight inch diameter. I think this is goes up to 14 or 15 inches, maybe bigger than that. I think this is almost 16 inch diameter steady rest. So I got both steady rests for it, which I absolutely tickle pink about because I know normally these are missing. So what do you guys say? Let's see how this thing runs. There's backwards. Here's forwards, here's high. Let's see where we're at for high. Let's do straight up. It's high. <laughs> Sounds funny today. There's reverse. The only complaint I really have about this machine is how to move the tailstock and lock it into place. Uh, I'll show you, come in here real close. I have these, it has these two bolts and there's a bottom plate underneath here that gets sucked up to the bottom of the ways and it locks it in from moving. So every time, say you wanted to change a drill bit out, you're drilling, you're drilling, you're drilling, you want to switch to another tool, you got to loosen these up with the wrench, drive it, pull it back, change the tool, push it back, and then lock these back into place again. And it just takes a lot of time. I'm used to something like this. Come on over here. I'm gonna show you. I'm used to this little, this little toy, which on the tailstock, you can just slide it in and out. And then there's this lever back here. You just push up and now it locks it into place. 
So you can drill, you can tap, and then hold this and lock it. It's just super fast, right? So I'm thinking, well, let's move over here. This would be a really fun shop project, and so take some engineering, but something that we could do to make this like a, a fast change locking mechanism. Maybe there's a, put a plate across here and a cam inside here and a lever or something that makes this operate similar to that style uh, tailstock. I think that will be really fun. And I know this is also missing a, uh, a crank, which we attach, uh, attaches to the side of it. It's this uh, rack that wraps around and it grabs the rack down here at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. But it comes down, wraps around, and it has a handle on it to where you can actually crank the tailstock back and forth using the rack. That is a missing component, and I, it might have been a special order piece, but that is missing. I'm going to have to put that on my list of things to get for it because I'd like to have that, or maybe we'll just make one. That would be fun too. But so, quick disconnect to be able to slide it and lock this in place and some sort of racking to move this back and forth. Those are my really my only two complaints about this machine so far. Uh, other than that, that it's super long, but at the time, it wasn't about length. It was more about getting the best quality lathe that I could for the best price. And this was, a, I'm super tickled pink of how accurate it is so far and how much power it has. And, uh, Look forward to seeing this in many, many, many builds here in the shop. So uh, stick around for some maybe some future upgrades. I know I have some lights, some maybe some camera attachments to be able to put on this thing so we can catch all the cool video shots of this thing in action when she's working. Okay? So I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll catch you on the next one.